Here is a conception of nature as something you must trust. Outside nature, the birds, the bees, the flowers, the mountains, the clouds, and inside nature, human nature. Now, nature isn't trustworthy completely. It'll sometimes let you down with a wallop. But that's the risk you take. That's the risk of life. What's the alternative? I do not trust nature at all. It's got to be watched. Do you know what that leads to? It leads to 1984 and Big Brother. It leads to the totalitarian state where everybody is his brother's policeman. And where everybody is watching everybody else to report them to the authorities. Where you can't trust your own motivation. Where you have to have a psychoanalyst in charge of you all the time to think, to be sure that you don't think dangerous thoughts or peculiar thoughts. And you report all peculiar thoughts to your analyst. And your analyst keeps a record of them and reports them to the government. <laughs> and everybody is busy keeping records of everything. It's much more important to record what happens than what happens. This is already eating us up. It's much more important that you have your books right than that you conduct your business in a good way. In universities, it's much more important that the registrar's records be in order than that the library be well stocked. After all, do you know your grades are all locked up in safes and they're protected from thievery and pilfering and they're the most valuable property that the university has? <laughs> the library can go hang. Then furthermore, the main function of a university is, what any sensible person would imagine, of to teach students and to do research. So the faculty should be the most important thing in the university. On the contrary, the administration is the most important thing. The people who keep the records, who make the game rules up. And so the faculty are always being obstructed by the administration and being forced to attend irrelevant meetings and uh, to do everything but scholarship. Do you know what scholarship means? What a school means? The original meaning of a scholar? Leisure. We talked of a scholar and a gentleman because a gentleman was a person who had a private income and he could afford to be a scholar. He didn't have to earn a living, therefore he could study the classics and poetry and things like that. Today, pssst, Nothing is more busy than a school. They make you work, 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 because you get cut through on schedule. They have expedited courses, and you, you, you go to school so as to get a union card, a PhD or something, so that you can earn a living. So that's a whole contradiction of scholarship. Scholarship is to study everything that's unimportant. Not necessary for survival. All the charming irrelevances of life. You see, the thing is this, if you don't have a room in your life for the playful, life's not worth living. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. But if the only reason for which Jack plays is that he can work better afterwards, he's not really playing. He's playing because it's good for him. <laughs> he's not playing at all. You. You have to be able to be a true scholar. You have to cultivate an attitude to life where you're not trying to get anything out of it. You pick up a pebble on the beach. Look at it. It's beautiful. Don't try and get a sermon out of it. Sermons in stones and God in everything be damned. <laughs> Just enjoy it. Don't feel that you've got to salve your conscience by saying that this is for the advancement of your aesthetic understanding. Enjoy the pebble. If you do that, you become healthy. You become able to be a loving, helpful human being. But if you can't do that, if you can only do things because they are somehow you're going to get something out of it, you're a vulture.